Hey everybody. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about how to read an old style five and a quarter inch floppy disk on a modern PC or laptop. The disk I have here for demonstration purposes is the Lucasfilm Passport to Adventure, which is demos of Secret of Monkey Island, Indiana Jones, and Loom, but it doesn't make a difference. We can use any disk. Now, if you're younger, if you haven't seen these old style discs, we don't remember playing with them, you might remember these three and a half inch floppy disks. This was the share, share version of Doom. And if you want to play one of these three and a half inch disc games on a modern PC, you're in luck. It's super easy because you can buy these USB floppy drives anywhere for, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks from Amazon, eBay. There's like 50,000 different companies that make them. I don't know if they're made in China or Taiwan or what, but there, there's so many varieties out there. All you gotta do is just put the floppy disk inside the drive. There it's inside. I connect the USB connector to a USB port on my laptop and I'm all good to go. So if you wanna use a three and a half inch disk, easy. But the problem is nobody ever designed a solution like that for these old five and a quarter inch disks. I guess at the time that USB came out and there was no more external or internal floppy drives on, on laptops or computers, People didn't care about these old five and a quarter inch discs anymore. Nobody bothered to make a similar solution. I'm sure it would have been very easy. It's probably still relatively easy if someone knows what they're doing today, but it doesn't exist on the market. So if you want to read a five and a quarter inch disc, it's a little bit harder. Now, what I have here is a device called the FC5025 from a company called Device Side Data. It's in this little static bag here stuck inside the static bag. Get it out without ruining it. Whoa. Sorry about that. So this is the FC5025. It's basically a replacement floppy disk controller for old style floppy drives that works via USB. And I'll show you how it works. So you need a few things here. It's not an all-in-one solution like this guy here. I wish it was. That's sort of the problem. So I'll put it down for a second. So first of all, you need to have an old school five and a quarter inch floppy drive. This is one that I pulled out of an old machine. You can buy them on eBay. Device side does not sell the drives typically. You have to go and actually you know, pick this up yourself. So I have a floppy drive here. It's exposed to the elements. I go ahead and take this disc out of the sleeve and put it inside the drive. It goes in like that and I can close it. Now, it's not gonna do anything like this, obviously. If you turn around the drive, the way that it's supposed to be connected inside the computer is, there's a power connector over here. This is the power connector, I think it's called a Molex connector. And then here's where the, the, uh, the drive cable gets attached to, the floppy drive cable onto this, this connector over here. So you need a couple things to get this to work outside of a desktop machine, because usually, this connector here would just connect to the power supply on the actual the tower case or whatever else. So I'm trying to connect to a laptop. I don't have that. So what you need basically is a separate power supply, which you can buy separately, but device side does actually sell these, I think, for about 25 bucks. And you can see essentially it's a power supply. One end of it is a regular plug that goes into the wall. And the other end here is this, this connector. The, I think it's called a Molex connector that goes into the floppy drive. So I can go ahead and connect this to the end of the drive like this. And then that, when I plug it into the wall, will power the drive and able to power on. So that's, that's, that's part one. Then we actually have to get the, the drive itself connected to the, the controller over here. So for that, you need a standard floppy drive cable which I believe you could also get from device side for a couple of dollars, but this is a standard floppy drive cable that you could plug an old machine or, or buy on eBay as well. Uh, you have to connect it here. If you're used to using this in old machines, you can tell this side is the side that goes to the controller. These other two sides go to the floppy drives. Um, you can have multiple floppies connected. This would be one of them. This would be the other one over here. There's two different types of connectors, one for the five and a quarter inch drives. This one is actually for the old style three and a half inch drives. So you have to sort of know what you're doing here. You also have to remember from your old, the old days that the red line indicates this is pin one. So it starts actually over here. 
So again, as I said, this side goes to the, the goes to the controller. So I'm going to plug this side here into the FC5025. And if you look at the board itself, I don't know if you can see in the video, but it, it says here that uh, pin one is on this side of the connector. Pin one is over here. So I know that the red the red band is pin one. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this side here. It's important to connect the right side, or it's not going to work, and you might have some other adverse uh, effects. So now this side is connected to that, and the other side I'm going to connect the end here to the floppy drive. And this one you can only connect one way. There's a little notch uh, on the left side of, of what I'm showing here. There's a notch about two pins in. I don't know if you can see it well enough, but basically that notch will prevent you from putting it on the wrong way. There's really only one way to put it on. So I'll go ahead and attach that here. Actually, I tried to do it the wrong way. It didn't connect. So this is the right way to do it. Okay, so now I have, so far, <laughs> it's kind of a little crazy here. I have a floppy drive with a disk inside. I have a power cable, which is going to be plugged into the wall. I have a floppy drive cable. The other end is plugged into this controller. And then I need the last piece here, a USB cable, which you can also, I think it comes with it even, but you can also get these easily. This is, uh, this plugs into this side over here of the controller. And then the other end plugs in to your PC. So <laughs> it's sort of, you know, it's I, admittedly, it's not a very elegant solution. Um, device side data used to make an enclosure that you can put this thing and all these other pieces into and it would basically be self-contained just like this three and a half inch version over here. Unfortunately, that's been out of stock since like 2014 when I actually bought this and I don't know when it's going to be back in stock. <laughs> They're still saying it's going to be back in stock soon. In the meantime, you could get your own external enclosure, obviously, but I actually chose to just use it like this. Um, I was actually very surprised it didn't just sort of break because they always told you that static electricity will fry these exposed boards, but uh, you know, so far so good, I haven't had any issues. So again, I'm gonna just fry it out. Power goes into the wall. That connects to the power on the floppy drive. Then you have the, the floppy cable that connects the, to the, this, this port over here on the floppy drive. That connects to the cable, in, the input on the controller and the USB cable comes out and this goes into your computer. So <laughs> very complicated. And then you still need a program to run to actually extract the data from the disk. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. But a couple things to note. One is that this, this solution is read only. You can't write the floppies, you can only read. Number two, it creates image files. Uh, you can extract the raw files out of there, but it's, it, it by default creates image files. And number three, it only works on basically um, DOS disks that are not copy protected. So if you have a disk with special copy protection or if you have an old PC booter disk from let's say before 1983 or four that doesn't actually use DOS, this solution is not necessarily going to work. But it will work on the vast majority of disks. It should work on this LucasArts demo. I also have another example here which is just fine lying around uh, Double Dragon 3, which is two disks, which I'm gonna try. But generally it should work and you know it's better than not having a solution at all so unless you want to have an old desktop hooked up all the time with a, with a floppy disk in there this is something which you can take and use on any laptop admittedly a pain to, to connect sometimes and maybe to store it but like I said better than nothing anyway let's uh, let's plug this in and let's see how it works so here's what it looks like when you're trying to access a disk using the FC5025 you have to select the right disk type, otherwise it's not going to work. So the first thing you do is go to the drop down to disk type and select the right one. So let me set this here to MS-DOS 360K, since we're going to try a low density disk first, see what happens. You can hear the disk whirring in the background, which is pretty cool. And then we get to see the uh, directory listing. Now, if you press the Create Disk Capture Image File button instead, it'll actually start reading the contents of the disk. Again, you can hear the disk going in the background. Been pretty cool. And once it gets to the end, you'll have a .image file, which you can then use to load into DOSBox. So here I have DOSBox running, and uh, I'm going to use the Image Mount command 
to mount the image file onto a virtual floppy drive in DOSBox, which will be drive A. So this is the command that you have to type in to do that. Once that's done, I can just access drive A and the disk you know, basically loads really fast because it's actually a hard drive image. And I can run the program. This is the LucasArts sampler. And uh, what this is, is it's basically samples of three games. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the uh, adventure game, Secret of Monkey Island, and Loom, all of which are, are really great games. Here's the intro for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Uh, love the music, love the visuals. It's like uh, you know, basically the young Indiana Jones sequence from the beginning of the Last Crusade movie. Just a lot of fun. Um, and then it jumps right into the demo. I'm not really going to show this. That this basically is the same as the actual game um, until you get to a certain point. And then once you get to that point, right over here towards the end of the demo, uh, basically it goes to a demo sequence that shows you like sort of what's going to happen to the rest of the game. This is Loom, which really is known for its beautiful music, and uh, actually all the puzzles in the game are based around music as well. This is a really classic game. The demo just lets you play the beginning section. There's not much difference between the demo and the real game, except for the fact that some of the graphics have been removed to save some space on the disc, because there's not really have a lot of space on this disc. But other than that, it's basically the same. So I'm not going to show too much of this, but this is a really great game that Everybody here needs to play at some point. And finally, we have The Secret of Monkey Island, which was not actually finished at the time that this demo disc was put out. And as a result, this is sort of the most interesting game that's on the disc because they basically had to create a demo out of whatever part, portions of the game were, were ready, and they had to build basically some new puzzles in. I mean, they're not really very interesting puzzles. It's, pretty, it's sort of a short demo, but if you really like Monkey Island, you need to try this out because there's some stuff here that we're seeing right now, some of it, that you've not seen in the actual game. In the actual game, this troll is, is blocking some uh, bridge somewhere. Here, he's not letting you basically to the rest of the island and you actually can't get to the rest of the island in the demo. When you, when you get past this guy, basically the demo ends. But again, there's a lot of stuff that you, that you may not have seen before, and it's worth checking it out. And I'll skip ahead to probably the most interesting thing. Here in the Voo Lady's Hut, you can pick up this chalice. So that's a neat joke in reference back to the Indiana Jones game. And then if you talk to the voodoo lady, all of her dialogue is basically different. And she talks about the fact that this is, a, this is a demo and it's not really a game and check out the game and things like that. I'm not going to show the whole thing, but again, uh, take a look at it, especially if you're a Monkey Island fan. You'll definitely find it interesting. Finally, I wanted to show you guys how to handle the case where you have more than one disc, like with Double Dragon 3. Unfortunately, the base DOS box does not handle this properly. You need to have a special build like this SVN down version that I'm running here, you can see at the top it says that, or another build that supports multiple floppy images. Then you use the image mount command, you pass the names of the images one after the other. Um, so I did it wrong the first time here. There I go, now I've drive a mounted. And it, what it does is it loads the first image first, and then there's a key combination that you press, I think control F4, when you want to switch the disks. So let's insert this number two, I just press the key combination, and then it loads in the second disk really fast, again, because it's just virtual. Now, I'll actually go ahead and run the game. We'll see what it looks like. I'll select uh, the AdLib Sound Blaster. And here's the game running. The graphics actually look pretty good for, for this game. I mean, it's IBM PC 1990, so you're able to get decent graphics. Actually, 1992, it looks like. So you have the intro sequence. They tell you the story or whatever. That you know, looks pretty good to start with. But the actual game, uh, which we'll get to very shortly, is, in my opinion, really terrible. 
we actually finally start the game. The way this works is Double Dragon 3s, you can buy weapons. Uh, they give you a lot of, you can buy tricks actually, power-ups, extra lives. They give you coins, you can buy a lot of them. I just had a really hard time just playing this game. I mean, I've played Double Dragon the arcade, I'm good at it. I've played Double Dragon 2 on the PC, and I was good at that. Uh, but this Double Dragon 3 on the PC, even with buying all this, this stuff in the store... I just felt like uh, these guys were basically just uh, walking all over me, beating me up. I was trying to figure out how to use the controls and just uh, basically making it not too fun. Anyway, the point of this just was to make sure, see how you get the disc game to work. The fact that the game sucks is sort of irrelevant. So I'll leave you with this. But uh, I hope that uh, you guys found this video interesting, educational, entertaining. Uh, if you liked it, please tell your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the like button. Please share the video. And uh, I hope that everybody can use this information to play some classic IBM PC games on their modern systems. So with that, I'll leave you and have a great day, everybody.